Well, hello everybody. This is C. Porter here. Been a while. I've just been letting sunshine just set itself in place and otherwise. Um, but I'm back now and I got the, uh, the VVVI again. And I've gotten it fixed. I've gotten it serviced. got a lot of things with it. So it's basically brand new now. Apart from some small things such as this new crank that was put in it because the last guy decided to weld it to the uh weld it to the spring barrel and other things so this is the only thing really anachronistical about this machine now is that this crank is from a from a uh i think it's from a v the victor 10 i think it's called something slightly newer than this but uh yeah apart from that you know that's one of the things about victor it's just so interchangeable but yeah, the thing is back, and it can play something now without um, without clanking and chugging and sounding like God slamming his utensil drawer in, in his kitchen or something else like that. <laughs> um, it plays well enough, and I think I'm going to start um, doing videos with it sometime soon. The only real thing that I've been that's been stopping me so far is I'm down on needles, as you can see from that. Uh, needle tin over there that's from my um, my graphanola which that's still a part that's still a task that I'm slowly getting back together myself but dang oh my god spring barrels are so insanely hard to do on Columbia's at least for me and I don't know I'm no expert or anything like that anyways so this machine is it's a mahogany, it's BBVI of 1919, um, uh, felt and everything else appears to be brand new. Um, not really much has been added to this machine apart from this nickel plated um, motorboard uh, lift right here, but that was necessary due to, um, it was necessary due to how hard it was to access it. But it was done with um, with care and um, notice for accuracy as much as it could be. I am the, I am the last person in the world to uh, to mess around with anachronism. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll move on to now how I'm going to actually use this machine. Now, of course, if any of you have talked to me before about phonographs or anything, of course. I am leaning towards the middle side of this somewhat controversial issue with phonographs, being that, um, well, there's been there's been for at least 50, 60 years now, there's been this whole audiophile uh, claim that if you play any 78s on any phonograph, you're going to destroy it. And of course, there is some truth to that, but it's not entirely true. And I'll get to the end of that first. I'll get into that in a, in a moment, but firstly, I'm just going to tell you what is going to be playing on it. So, I am mostly just going to be doing period correct stuff. So, earliest I'll go is these about 1905 or so, 1904, uh, Victor or Victor Batwing or anything else like that. Definitely Columbia stuff as well. Um, with this machine, unlike the Graffinola, there's no real drop and die thing that's, that I the single springs tend to have whenever, um, you know, just different wear otherwise. And yes, this is a pre-electrical reproduce on the Victor number two, but that doesn't mean that I have to stop at exactly 1925. Some labels like the, uh, the Columbia Dime Store stuff like Harmony or Velvetone or Diva, all that stuff, went all the way up until the late 20s. Uh, depending on which which, uh, which record it is, it is acoustical, as well as um, you know, Clarion up through about 1931 or 32 had some acoustical re-releases going back to about 1910 or so. So if I find any of those, plus you know, you also have your standard stuff like Vocalion or other things like that that were relatively. Um, well, it was mixed between electrical and acoustical, from what I understand. I haven't looked really deeply into vocalion, but stuff like that will be playing. But as well as, from what I understand, from uh, everyone I've talked to, there is nothing wrong whatsoever with playing 
acoustical re-releases made in the 40s or otherwise. Yes, the shellac is newer, but this is, um, the contents on it are from the early 20s, so it really should be fine. I mean, granted, I'm not going to be playing this stuff on here all the time, though. But it's definitely better than what a lot of people play on these machines, the, the pre-electrical um, machines, so I won't, you won't be seeing much or any really of the 30s or anywhere else for it. Um, so basically, I don't I don't know all the specifics, and I don't really care to explain it all. But basically, it's the it's the whole thing of with these machines. Simply put, they weren't designed to play decades in advanced material for what's available. It's not. Look, what do you um what do you think would work better to play on a machine like this? A 1923 cut on a Brunswick of something by Abe Lyman. What, do you think that would be better for it to play? Or a 1957-58 ABC Paramount by uh, the Sparkle Tones. What do you think would work better for it that's designed to play? Not this, I can assure you of that. So, yeah, this sort of 78 would be ruined on there. And anything in the 40s like... Uh, your CBS, um, your CBS Columbia's or Ocalians, Black Decas, anything else like that, even Blue Decas, just at that point, it just um, even even most say that even um, stuff like Viva Tunnels or Orthophonics can't really play that stuff because the signal's too bad, and you'll just you'll just cut into the actual grooving itself. It's not good for you. Like at that point. The whole dynamic, the uh, the industry, everything else has changed really for how fun the rats were built and everything. So I won't be really doing any of that as well. You can talk to many people about this. It varies from opinion to opinion. Um, people get incredibly passionate about it. And I guess you have to be, and you have to be speaking at least a little bit of uh, with choice words with people because... That's the whole thing about this hobby is you're trying to protect and preserve everything about the music from this time. And we already get enough hate from people these days saying, you know, who cares you're playing a phonograph? No one mat and nothing matters. ETC. But yeah, so as well as um, even up to this point where like I'm a, uh, this camera angle, this isn't definitive. I'm still experimenting around and. Please tell me if you if you'd like it to be somewhere else. Like I'll be experimenting around from record to record for where to put the doors at and elsewhere because all this stuff is so the sound is so malleable, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Please, um, in the future or otherwise, if you hear something that I'm not hearing about the reproducer or whatever else that you're hearing something that I'm not because I'm not too um, phonographically experienced despite having a graphenola. Um, please do say in the comments because the last thing I want to do is end up using this this uh, incorrectly and uh, spoiling future 78 or phono owners for um, that will get my records once I, uh, I move on or pass on or whatever else. This stuff we all hope that this stuff lives centuries more, and if we take proper care of it, it definitely can. So, that's about it. Oh, yeah, also needles. The whole reason right now I'm just not, um, I've not made videos yet, because I'm running low on needles. I'm going to be getting some soon. I just ordered some. Uh, soft tone, medium, and loud. I'm probably mostly going to be using soft tone, so, yeah. Um... Don't worry, I'm going to be using the whole um, one per play. Now, granted, if there's one record that, um, if there's like one record where I'm playing, testing it, like, okay, I get like 20 seconds or so, or 30 seconds or so in, sounds good for the video. Otherwise, I'm going to use that same needle because it's not really spent at all. And, you know, needles, it's not like three minutes and 40 seconds, and then it's like, okay, I'm done. 
and all stuff like that now so yeah there's it's a little bit more malleable than people say but generally yes one play um, per needle is what is strongly recommended by everyone and I I as well you know also go for that so yeah that's about it and I see I still have some time left so I guess I'll give it a oh no I do not have enough time but yeah you guys uh, I'll see you guys around um, hopefully in the next few days I'll put up a record or so and we can go from there sorry for the uh, long absence I'll see you guys around and that's about it.